Hello everyone. Welcome to this session on Skype in the Classroom. We are being led by one of education's greats, Anne Mershon from Hawksdale, Peter 12, down in the southern part of Victoria. I'm sure she'll introduce herself for you in just a moment. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> yes, you are one of the greats. You have a lot to live up to, Anne. Thank you to our sponsors and supporters. Anne and I were, in fact, the originators of the Australia E-Series quite a few years ago now. And we run our sessions still for educators freely online. And we do that, of course, by our association with Steve Hargaden from America, who runs the Learning Revolution Project. And at the end of each session, you will have noticed a little survey from, from them. We use our Blackboard Collaborate rooms free for these conferences, for which we are extremely grateful. Now, we, we probably know where everyone is. We've just heard from Brian, who is in Essendon at the moment, in a cafe. So you might like to add your little icon, if you wish, to the map here. It's always nice for Anne to see where you are. Oh, it's getting crowded down there in the southern part. <laughs> and of course, use the text chat. Anne loves it when there's lots of interaction because she watches everything. All right, I'm going to let Anne lead from now on for Skype in the Classroom. Over to you, Anne. Thank you, Carol. Um, I'll just put my, oh, my video's not going to work, so I'm not going to use that because I think it could drop me right out. Um, thank you for your wonderful introduction, Carol, and I hope if I miss questions in the chat that you will stop me so I'll answer them as soon as they occur. But just to let you know a little bit about me, I teach in southwestern Victoria in a very small rural country school. Um, as you can see, I teach, I have taught from prep right through to year 12, and I found that Skype has been an amazing tool to be able to work with any of those age groups and beyond. Um, I'm also a web conference coach, and as Carol said, we started doing webinars and online sessions many years ago, and I still moderate Tech Talk Tuesday. Um, just to show you a little bit about my school, it's called Hawksdale P12 College. There are 220 students prep right through to year 12. So that's age 5 to 18. Um, you can see that we're very much a rural school. So the students are rurally, uh, geographically, and culturally isolated. So we have beautiful grounds, but we do live a long way from Melbourne and major city centres. So for anyone that may not know exactly where we are in Australia, um, that little circle on the map shows you a little bit about where we are. Um, I would just like to know if you've actually used Skype before. So if you look over here on the left, under your name, you should be able to see the happy face. So could we all just smile to make sure you can see where I'm indicating? So look over here to the left. So we've got smiles. I want you to then look for that tick or cross. So could you just click on the little down arrow and say yes, no. Have you used Skype before? So I'm not sure about the mobile devices, whether you can do it there. Carol, can we? I'm not sure. You can use the smileys. I'm not sure about the polling tools. But I'm sure Brian okay, so we might just put one a way or another. Maybe we just put a yes, no in the chat, shall we? Um, so I'll just put that on the board. And I would love you now in the chat to tell me, I've told you where I'm from. What about you? Where are you from? What's your interest in education? And then maybe you could share a little bit about how you use Skype. Because um, we're all here uh, to be able to learn from and with each other. But for me, I found Skype to probably be my, one of my top three tools over the last five years or six years because it is user friendly. People across the world seem to be able to use it. Um, it's easy to access. I find they've improved their uh, use of bandwidth, etc. So for me, it's the most stable at this moment of any of the video conferencing tools. 
So we've used it for lots of our, lots of purposes, and probably the biggest ones that we've used it for are um, global awareness, cultural immersion, uh, for networking, and we've brought experts into our classroom. So I'd like to share some stories from my classroom with you as this session progresses, and hopefully we can all share our ideas, etc., and experiences. So I think we've all used Skype, so probably don't need to go through this, but it's very simple for what you need. Many teachers in the most poorest of countries simply have their own laptop, but they bring their classes in who have never seen a computer often, using Skype and connect them with the world. So there is now a app for a mobile Skype, and some of you may have that on your devices. If you don't, I suggest you do put it on. And there's also the Skype for the desktop. So I prefer Skype for desktop on my computer, but on my mobile devices, I will use the app. When you do use Skype, you'll notice that in your win opening up window, there's a plus sign. So first, we can just do an audio call call, a video call, which means we can have our video on at the same time and show our class, take people on virtual tours, etc. But I'm not sure how many of you have seen this plus sign, because Skype is great. It will let you send quite big files. So sometimes you want to quickly shoot a file through to a colleague or another class, and it doesn't take long, and it will take quite a big size, bigger than what sometimes my best email um, connections will do. You can actually add people, you can share a screen, so you can actually share what's on your computer screen by using that option. So many years ago I taught accounting virtually and we used Skype for that. So my student, virtual student could share his screen with me and he could ask questions and show me what he was doing with his accounting exercises. This just shows you what some of the chat can look like. So I find that chat is the least threatening form of connection. Everybody, even those who don't speak English very well, are quite happy to have a go at chat in its simplest or most, most complicated form. To bring in the video camera is a little bit more daunting, so some will need to get confidence with you as a colleague to be able to use that option. Others are quite happy to straight away come in and video with you. Um, this is just showing how it comes through with sending files. This is Todd Flory, who wants me to answer his cultural interview questions. So you can see he sent the file through Skype. I actually clicked to download it, and it says I've now received it. So I've saved it on my computer to look at and to answer for him. Has anyone used that file sending in Skype? Could you just either give us a tick or yes? It's a really quick way to send files. Yep, good. Um, that's just to remind you, there's a Skype for a desktop and there's the Skype mobile app. Both have users, but if you're using a computer desktop, I really suggest this one's still the easiest to use and the most comprehensive. Okay, what can we do with Skype? We can bring in authors and experts. We can bring the world into our classroom. So we no longer need to learn from the textbook completely. We learn from the world and the experts that are out there. So this lady's name is Dana Hilton. She was from USA. Um, I live in the country, so bushfires are always our biggest threat. She talked about fire safety in America. She brought her Dalmatian dog with her who came up to the web camera. And she had preps right through to year 10s from our school, all in the library, watching her, listening to her on the interactive whiteboard. She used her iPad to project photos, etc., to share what she wanted us to see. And bringing in her dogs, of course, was a huge winner. We also take part in World Read Aloud Day, which I think is this coming week. So students practiced reading books. They went to the library. They got books that were suitable for young students. We then linked up with a school in Darwin. And the young students in Darwin logged on with mine. And the students took it in turns to read their book. So this was quite an effort for mine. They had to learn to speak slowly, clearly. How do they project the book pages to the web camera? And even my 
I have some students who are very low with their literacy. They got into it. They could read those books. They all practiced. Then they went and read them to those virtual students. We've also brought in uh, some of my colleagues. So this is Shambles Guru, who's part of our conference. He actually taught my senior students about YouTube, how they should set it up properly, how to create channels, what their background should be, their safety settings, etc. And uh, Shambles is from Thailand. Hi, Steve. I find that Asia, and we are supposed to engage with Asia in our new Australian curriculum, it's completely in our time zone. They start school earlier, so nearly always our hours of school actually um, correlate. America is a lot harder, our English speaking countries a lot more difficult to connect with in real time. This is always a very special story for me. Uh, global days are great to interact with other global classrooms because they're just one off. They can be simple and as easy as need be. So here I'm talking about what peace meant to me in Australia with a classroom in Russia. So you can see when I first logged into Skype, I could see the teachers in the room and these are the special needs students who are up the front. Many of them don't come to school each day because their disabilities don't allow them to do that. So um, this time they all came to school, they all watched me up on the great big screen and we started with what's called Mystery Skype. So they had to ask questions with a yes, no answer only of me to find out where I lived. Students who were in the room actually asked quite a few questions but didn't get Australia. I thought these teachers were recording me, but next minute the web camera zoomed in on one of the students on, who was showing on that laptop. And this student from the laptop asked me if I was from Australia. So the students in the laptops were actually logged in with their teacher who projected me through the web camera of Skype so they could see me on the big white board that all the face-to-face -face students could. So they were so disabled they couldn't get to school, but it didn't mean that they missed out on anything. They could learn anytime, anywhere from their homes. Mystery Skype is a real favourite. So could you in the chat tell me, have you used Mystery Skype? So you need to organise another teacher, expert or classroom. And the students have to work out where that other connection is from and they do it through questions that will only allow yes or no. So are you in the northern hemisphere? No. Are you in the southern? Yes. So by those means of questions they work out exactly where the other class is from. I thought this was quite a simple exercise but students don't find it that way because they have to be very tight with their questioning it can be very narrow, they're daunted by people in a video camera or on a screen that they haven't met before or don't know. So this just shows you what it looked like. We linked up with a school in Indonesia. Uh, we didn't show our Australian flag at that stage but we pulled it out when they worked out, yes we were from Australia. But the amazing thing was that with this was that that school actually had an orangutan nursery in their grounds. So how amazing will this be to maintain the connections, hopefully do a virtual tour of their orangutan sanctuary and if not, learn from the students there more about these creatures which students in our school are fascinated with. Some people actually go a little bit further, so once you've done mystery location, you can do mystery number. So this probably suits younger classes, you know, the number I think of might be four. So the class that's connected with me has to work it out by questions with yes, no answers, that number four, if that makes sense. Some do mystery readers, so we have a teacher or a student reader something short and we have to listen very carefully to their accent, have a look whether it's perhaps night time, day time around them and work out where they are from. Another great use for us is sharing cultures because remember my students are culturally isolated. So here we've got Sebastian Panicle who actually presented at his conference. He came to on Skype, shared where he was from. We saw his breakfast because his wife brought him breakfast. We were about to have lunch. And then he showed us the origami that his wife makes. She learnt this on YouTube and she's now teaching the Indian people where she lives 
um, how to do origami and sell at craft markets and stalls. Oh, I love that 20 questions. That's a good one. Who said that? Steve, do you have a microphone? Would you like to quickly tell us a bit more about it? Just say yes, no to the mic. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Okay, yeah, sorry, Steve, that's not coming through very well, so I'll get you to drop your mic and perhaps tell us a bit more in the chat. Um, you can share cooking classes. So this is a class in Indonesia. Um, they were showing us a stir-fry dish and how to cook it, but the students in Indonesia didn't know the English word for this product that went in their stir-fry. So after about a minute, my students worked out they were bean shoots. So they were able um, to share what the English name of that vegetable was, bean shoots. They repeated it back to us. So they learned an English word, and we learned their Indonesian name for it. This was probably one of the first times that we actually got the full impact of cultural differences. We linked up with a school in Thailand in Chiang Mai. They created scratch stories um, about their religion and their culture. So we were seeing different writing now, not just seeing different people and hearing accents, seeing what their writing was like. We learnt about um, their religion because this was a story about Buddha and we actually could see the animation of their scratch story because they held their laptop up to the web camera in Skype and our um, connection was strong so we could see it quite clearly. Nepal is a country that we often think we would never get to connect with or link with and the kids have all heard of Mount Everest. So it's, first of all this was a mystery Skype session. Uh, they didn't get this one and time was limited so Govinda actually told them where he's from. But each student came up one at a time and asked Govinda a question and then he actually taught the students a little bit of Nepalese um, language and they had to repeat that back to him. Sorry, I was just reading the chat then. These are some of the questions that the kids asked. Now remember, these are quite spontaneous. They haven't pre-prepared questions because they didn't know they were going to link up. But these are some of the questions that um, intrigue students. And often they will read a textbook, think of those questions, but no one's there ever to answer it. But I thought this was quite a mature question from a 13-year-old girl. Are people who live in Nepal classified as Asian or Indian? So that shows some kind of um, preconceived knowledge, etc. How do you speak your language? He then went on to teach us a little bit of their language. But this is just to show you that some of the students in the world who live in Africa's largest slum are connected with their teacher using Skype. He connects them to the world. So they show us some of their handcrafts. There's no sign of books. There wasn't even a sign of very many deaths. If you look closely at the walls, you can get the atmosphere that they're living in. So if teachers in those areas can do it with their passion and their um, desire to connect, I wish more and more people in Australia and other more advanced countries would do the same. This is another, um, this is an example of using mobile Skype. My students were actually creating uh, scratch animations, but they had lots of questions of things they wanted to do with scratch. And because I'm not really an expert, I couldn't answer their questions. So lucky, my friend Lorraine Leo from Boston, USA was on Skype. So I quickly messaged her and said, Lorraine, would you please be able to um, look at my students' work in Scratch and help them solve their problems? So I quickly grabbed my iPad. We rang Lorraine. She videoed in. Students used the front camera to introduce themselves to Lorraine. They then reversed the camera on that uh, mobile device so Lorraine could see their actual coding here. She was then able to help them solve their problem and they were able to complete their scratch project. 
when Jesse had finished with Lorraine, he handed my laptop or my iPad onto the student next door. She answered their questions, so she became very much a mobile teacher on a mobile device. I think when we make connections with Skype, the learning becomes even more powerful if we maintain those connections a little bit beyond that. So one of my friends in Germany, on Skype, in the chat, asked if we could send a picture of our lunch, typical lunch box to his class in Germany. They were Year 7 science, so they could see healthy lunch boxes. So this was just two of my students. It was nearly lunchtime, so it was really good that the question came through them. We emailed, oh no, I think I sent that file through Skype to him, and he was intrigued because when he looked at our school blog, he saw we had a vegetable garden. So I taught the students in Germany by Skype at night time about our vegetable garden and our canteen and how our canteen uses the vegetables in the stir fries, etc., that it makes for lunch. He then asked if we were interested in having an Austra a German food day and Australian food day because their canteen manager was interested in making Australian food one day in the canteen and our manager was very keen to try the German food. So this lady didn't speak English. We don't speak German. So we had an interpreter. So we had to wait until each one of us was interpreted. The students, you can see, are actually studying English. So we use them then um, to actually do the interpretation, both of recipes and listen to our conversation. And if we look at the next screen, um, you can see when I first logged on, it was just you felt like you were in that classroom. It seemed like there were no walls between us. Our interpreter brought a German bread roll because they were suggesting we have German bread rolls, which is very popular at recess time for them, but it was quite different to ours. Ours were long and thin, so we found one of ours to share. Um, we showed them the Vegemite, some of the sweet slices we make, and our meat pies. So just to show you what happened, oh, then those English students in Germany, these kids, had to interpret the recipes and email it to our manager and make sure that the recipes that we sent were interpreted correctly, um, you know, the weights of ingredients, etc. So the German students decorate their canteen with Australian memorabilia. They put up, you know, a Happy Australia Day, etc. And this was a menu that we had in our canteen as a result of the conversations. So we had the pork schnitzel and gravy rolls, pasta bake, beef goulash, all sent from the German people themselves. Our canteen manager was so enthused about it that each term now we're going to link up with a, another country, hopefully talk to the canteen manager of the school in that country and have another um, special name day for them. These are, this is another example of Mystery Skype. I got an email, often you get Googled. So this lady, Mariko Iguchi, is a Japanese lecturer in the university, but she's passionate about global education. And she goes to a school and um, wants to introduce that school to the world, etc. So we linked up with her. We had a Mystery Skype, and we eventually got that she was from Japan. So when we do Mystery Skype, my students have Google Maps open on their devices. So they're actually watching Google Maps, trying to get quite um, local to where she lives. So we actually had to try and get right into that Shimani prefecture. But some classes just use atlases or a world globe to help them find out where they're from. But we were intrigued because we could see their classroom was quite different to ours, very formal and in straight lines. And this is also some of the comments from my students that they wrote up later. They were intrigued that their canteen only had one dish, curried rice. So she liked the sound of the variety in our canteen. Marika also took us on a virtual tour of the classroom, so she used a mobile device so we could get up quite close to the different areas of the classroom. But my students were amazed that there wasn't much sign of technology because for them, Japan is a high technology um, country. And our students are quite used to having a one-to-one -one device now. So I'm just going to quick do a screen share. We did work out that we would connect with the class in this classroom. So we saw the empty classroom, 
But what Marika wanted us to do is connect with a class that often lived or learnt in that classroom. So I think before we do connect with other classes, it's really good to get an idea what students know already about that country. So before we connected, now the students knew it was going to be Japan that I was connecting with, and I hope you can see my Google Doc. I set up a survey, and there were questions on the survey. I wanted the students' first name, one thing that they knew about Japan, another thing that they knew, and what else did they know? So hopefully three things they knew. But the surprising thing for me is that some kids knew nothing about Japan. Oh, I'll just increase this column so you can see. Some knew a little bit. Some knew one thing. Some knew two. And some, when they got to the third, struggled. After we did the connection, just while I'm screen, at sc screen sharing, this is what they now remember or know a little bit more about Japan. But it's not so much Japan itself, but about the people who live there. Because my students were, again, quite surprised. The school is strict. They put on blankets. And I'll show you this Santa story in a minute. The students in Japan laughed a lot, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope you've had a bit of time to get a little bit of a gist of what the students knew before and after. Uh, let me just bring back the screen. Um, so that was the first survey. So on the day when we were to link up with this class, we had to delay it because we had some other activity on at school. And my students had wanted to do Chris Kringle. And it, it, without it actually being deliberately planned, the kids had brought their Chris Kringle presents to school that day. So what we did, and we just got all this within 10 minutes, we went off and found a Santa Claus costume. Um, we had the presents wrapped as Kris Kringle. And I asked Marika, she'd set up some very formal questions for us to ask each other, would they like to just spend a bit of time looking at Christmas and the way we celebrate it? So while we were getting, we got the Christmas tree out of the grade six room. Um, I had the costume. We were just going to show the costume to the camera. But I heard some noise in the background as we connected, and the kids had decided to dress up one of the students as Santa. And to our amazement, when Brooke came in dressed as Santa, the Japanese kids who were sitting very formally in rows, etc., stood up and clapped her. So for a young, shy girl, this was a rather an amazing um, incident. We'd also had a Christmas morning tea, again without being planned. So we were able to bring in like a Christmas fruit cake, show lots of objects to the camera. From the students in my class, though, they were intrigued because many of the students they could see on the web camera were wearing a mask. And I wasn't sure whether it was polite to ask them why they wear a mask because the students are often quite um, conservative and they don't want to offend the other culture because some of the words we use, some of the way we act, the way we dress can be offensive. Anyway, it got the better of the curiosity of my students. So one girl went up to the camera and asked, why do they wear a mask? So this young boy came up to the camera and said, he doesn't want to catch a cold. Um, so now we know why they wear masks. We don't see that anywhere um, where we live in Australia, etc. But we know what was happening. The other thing they were intrigued about, I don't know if you can see the blanket that the girls have got on their knees there. Again, students were in, interested in why that was. Oh, that was the re oh, I didn't get the photo of that. So the girls brought the blanket up to the camera and said, it's snowing here. So on a hot summer's day, we are then video conferencing with another country that's got heavy snow. And they mustn't have heating in their school because they wore blankets to keep themselves warm. Another successful link up was breakfast with Taiwan. Food is always safe. We always find there's some difference in our food and it's of high interest to students. So this was another mystery Skype first just to see if we could work out where the um, students were from. My students hadn't heard of Taiwan so straight away they're learning of new countries etc. Um, the Taiwanese students brought their breakfast in for us so we could see these wonderful dumplings which made our mouths water. We could see their rice puddings. They have soybean tofu. We showed them our cow's milk that we drink. 
are we brought in porridge, but ours is made of oats. They had porridge, theirs was made of rice. So not just telling them, we could actually see what they were eating. So when we finished, we went off to eat lunch, but the Taiwanese students went off and ate their breakfast. Again, showing time zone differences. We showed Vegemite, because Vegemite is always high interest. Um, we bring bread in, so we actually show how it's spread. They want to know what it tastes like, etc. But we just loved, they used their camera really effectively. Students came up right close to the camera, demonstrated their product, etc. International Friendship Day is another really good um, day to connect. And this was with a school in Malaysia. So not only just using Skype, Skype was simply open to make it look like our classrooms were one. We used the web camera on each class so the teachers and the students could get the idea of the body language. We could hear laughter when we probably said something that uh, made them laugh. Uh, we laughed when we read something that they did too. So Skype just broke down the classroom's walls for this. And if we did have a question, we could go up to the web camera and ask it. But the students actually were put in groups of three or four on a Google document. And they had to discuss International Friendship Day. Um, so they had set questions. And then they summarized some of the things they talked about. But what I liked was these students, some of them were Mandarin Chinese speaking, and that's the language that our students use. Uh, we also found it fascinating. They asked what hobbies our students do, um, were involved in, and one of the girls rides horses, and that's what she does every day of the year. But the kids in Malaysia said they're lucky to see a horse anywhere. They might see one in a zoo. So we're learning a lot about differences in cultural activities, etc. But as a result of that link up, we then went to a tool called Padlet. And we wrote sympathy, uh, sympathetic me uh, messages on their wall, because it was soon after the MH17 um, disappearance. And then we actually shared a minute's silence with them at the same time as their whole country um, remembered those who had gone down in the plane. And remember, Australians had also been lost on that plane. This is just some of the things that the kids like, what they like. They learn a little bit more about um, different countries and cultures. What they learn, safety is always the first lesson. You know, we discuss etiquette, appropriate behaviour. Uh, we try and have objects there. We've learned to create signs. So when they don't understand what we say, we either use a chat or put a sign up to the screen. And they've learned how to use a web camera and virtual communication, speaking clearly and loudly. Because I think as Australians, we speak very quickly and put lots of words together. What next? This is what the students would like. They want to keep doing this sort of thing. They love linking up, etc., etc. I want to spend a few minutes showing you education.skype.com. So I don't know, Carol, if you're, or someone could just type that um, in for us. But this is the most amazing website that Skype has put up. So Microsoft has actually taken over Skype. And they're really um, promoting this site, adding to it all the time. And there's some wonderful things to have and be done there. So if you don't have the connections, this site does. So you can actually create your global classroom anywhere by joining that site as an educator. And this would be great for disabled students, gifted students, classroom students, etc. Um, so you can invite guest speakers to come in and introduce themselves. So here's an example of one of the trainers of the elephants who brought their camera to um, Skype and was able to share that in real time with other classes. You can actually connect with people in Antarctica and in the North Pole. So what amazing adventures. You don't need to take the kids on a big excursion. You do it virtually. So in the Skype community, there are about more than 81,000 teachers now, all looking to connect. There's over 200 countries and territories represented as members on this site. So you can look for teachers from different countries. And there's a whole heap of lessons that teachers and experts are putting up there for others to be able to access and to use. So they've not only got the um, web pages. It's all free, by the way. So Skype is free. 
and all these other things are free. So they've got a Facebook page. You can follow them on Twitter at Skype Classroom. You can actually go to the people will tweet with a hash mystery Skype tag. So straight away, if you're on Twitter, you can find connections that way too. So um, I thought I might quit trying to do an application share and show you what it looks like. So I'll just share my screen again and find it. So I can quickly show you what it looks like. I'm just going to pull up the chat for a minute. Can you see my screen? So I know I've hidden a little bit on the side. Let me know when that's come through for you. So all you do is go to that Skype in Education site, click on Join, and it will step you through how to join the site. Then you simply log in and you've got access to all that. You know, I can't see that anyone can see my screen. Can you please just tell me in the chat? Or give me a smiley face. Can you see? Oh, okay, Carol. So I'll drop this down and just use the mic to interrupt me. So I've actually logged in to Skype in the classroom. That's what it's called up here. So you can go home, but this actually shows a video which would pull our bandwidth down. You can click on Find a Lesson, and that's where I've gone now. So when you click on that link, it brings up the most popular or some of the recommended lessons that are out there. So you can connect with Microsoft experts and learn about computing. Um, coming up from the school in the cloud, we're going to have a big question challenge. And this is actually part of a literacy program. So they're going to put up um, questions at regular intervals, which your classes can use, etc. I can get guest speakers for computer science coding, because that's what my teaching area. Um, you can see you can get home gardens. People will actually teach you if you don't understand how to use Skype. These global classroom and master educators actually do one-on-one -on -one training with you. So there's also Alice, there's an author, um, Mariana Lanis. Some people love to connect with the 50 states of America if they're in America, etc. But you can do it even better than that. Remember, that's the home screen. So if I click on subjects, I can choose a subject area. So shall we do culture, maybe? I can choose an age group. So people say whether their lessons or their um, what they're going to do over Skype is for three to five year olds or 18 plus. So I teach older students, so I'm going to do that. And you can actually do an advanced search there, but I'm just going to search on that to see what comes up. So I can be part of that world of peace education. So I, the class can talk to a future international director um, of world peace. We can do classroom cultural and language um, exchanges, etc. So just very quickly, that's what that does. But I can also find a teacher. And I love this option because it usually brings up a world map. So I hope I'm right that it's going to do that. So can you see me? I've popped up immediately because I'm logged on. So if I say I've got it, it's come up with Victoria. But I can zoom out. There's all the people on Skype, sorry, in Australia. Well, I need to zoom out. I'll pull down the map, so you might have to pull the globe down. So let's say you're studying Thailand or earthquakes or whatever. There's people there from Indonesia, Malaysia, um, who's a member of this site. So you simply find them, and then you actually um, send them a message, and hopefully they come back. So have we got China? Yeah, we've got China on there too. So those classes are in the same time as Australian class time. Um, you can also look for people that say they specifically want to do mystery Skypes because we find that that's fun. And the tab at the top of that page also lets you go and find anyone that mystery Skypes. Oh, I hope you saw when you find a teacher, you could also choose to find the expert. So why not bring in one of the big world experts to your classroom? They are happy to do it for free. So that's a little bit about um, Skype in the classroom. Let's see if there are any questions were there. Very quiet. I hope you've got some questions for me. Anyway, a great site to actually log into and become a member of. Uh, let me stop sharing, go back to the whiteboard. Again, remember it's all free. I did the screen dumps just in case my internet wasn't good. Um, you can also use it for professional development. You can actually hook up 
a 10 video cameras through Skype and create a group, but probably five is its maximum before the bandwidth gets pulled. But this lady, uh, Teresa Allen, or I think it's Tony Oliveri there, actually does online PG for Skype and she's got that wiki space there uh, with some of the sites, etc. Uh, this is just that PG with a difference. It's not just for teachers. Lorraine taught my students how to create those little Skype animations. Um, getting towards the end of the session, some tips, tricks and challenges. The biggest challenges for us in Australia is the time zone. People in America love to connect with us, but they're usually at school when we're uh, asleep. And as our school day starts, they're finished. So there are Florida and Phoenix, Arizona, who I think are about 4.30 p.m. now. So you might just grab them. If they're willing to stay behind after school, yes, of course we can. Bandwidth is a problem, but I found that Skype has improved its use of bandwidth. And of all the tools I use, this is my most bandwidth friendly. I can use Google Hangouts and I struggle to stay in and use a video camera much of the time. But this one, um, most of the time is good. The video quality can be a bit flaky, but I think you can see from the photos I took from my um, laptop, not with a camera, that you know we had pretty good visuals, etc. And for linking up with students and teachers that don't speak English as a first, second, or third language, communication can be a problem. But that's why it's good to use the chat. Write your question in the chat as well as ask it, so that they make sure they understand. Etiquette. Students should come up close to the camera, um, be on their best behaviour. If they fidget too much, it gets flaky. Um, you can assign student roles so they're all kept busy. So maybe you use one of the students as a photographer, one as a note taker, etc. And I find it's always good to test the connection before you bring your class in. If technology doesn't work, be flexible. Have a backup plan. Hang up and just call again, because often the second call is a little bit more stable, etc. Um, some tips. Always have a go at presetting the agenda, but that's not always possible, because often someone will chat in Skype and say, is your class, or could you quickly Skype with my class? So then you're teaching on the fly and just letting the lesson happen. But if it's like for that Japanese link up, we had a very formal um, agenda which went out the window because they love seeing our Christmas um, activities and objects. Just remind everybody, make sure the time is what you think it is because remember time zones can be your biggest hiccup. If you're connecting with America, it will be the day before and a different time completely. Just keep me checking. Now a good tool to use is time and date. I don't know if you've seen that one, but that will convert times very easily for you. Uh, you can allocate the roles to the students and know their limits. Young ones could get very restless after 20 minutes. Um, but then I found if it's a captivating expert, like Dana, the author, she kept them captivated for 45, 50 minutes. And always text before you make the phone call. Just make sure they're ready before you ring. Um, you'll need to do, deal with noise, you might have to mute the mic in between, bad connections, you know, just hang up, call again. Perhaps try and prepare some question and answers or have them, you know, at the fingertips of students. Grab bag, have your flag in there, have your a cricket ball, um, netball, footy, etc. Things to share with them. And have some handwritten signs or digital signs on their laptops to share. So we have a lot of um, sheets that we've just handwritten on to make sure they understand what we say. Because, you know, what is the name of your school? If students ask that question, they often uh, don't quite catch it the first time. Please repeat is a great sign to have. So a student goes up to the web camera, puts it up there, says please repeat, and the other class will have another go at saying it for you. I find the more and more we connect with countries that don't speak English, you may need an interpreter, so we have to learn how to teach and learn students as well, waiting for the interpreter to interpret for the other class or for us. Um, Skype doesn't always work in real time, so 
to be able to avoid that, we can actually do Skype video messages. So Skype itself allows you to record a message of up to three minutes. Um, yeah, I'm about to do the Skype translator, Steve. So you can actually send the video message to the other class. So um, just on Friday, we had to send nine tips about where we lived to a class in Portugal. So they'd sent us their questions on a video, or their clues, I mean. So one of their clues was they live near the Atlantic Ocean. Their favourite food is sardines. They live in the Northern Hemisphere. So we sent 11 questions to them. Um, but before I did that, with my students, they don't really often think about our own culture. So I set up an answer gun, which is another tool that I love. Very easy to set up. You don't need log. Oh, you need a login, or you don't even really need a login. And the students just go to the link that you share. So I got them to think about what do you think of when you hear the word Australia. So you can see these are the answers from the 24 students I had. And the more people that have the same answer, the bigger the writing. So meat pies were big, kangaroos were big. But if we said we, that one clue is kangaroos, of course the other country would guess it straight away. So instead the boys worked out it might be better and more challenging to say many of our unique animals are great, like our wombat, uh, well we call it greyish, koala, kangaroo, etc. Um, so these are the clues the students in ICT came up with. We videoed them asking those questions and then the school in Portugal looked at our video and they've actually answered with another video to say yes, um, do we live in Australia? So my students have to go and work out where that country is from next week when I have them. Um, you just need to know how to request contacts of people. Don't just ask to be a contact. Tell them about yourself. I don't accept any contact request unless they say they're a teacher, where they live, what they're interested in, why they want to connect with me. Because Skype is um, open to the world and there are some people out there that you probably don't want on your list. Uh, so we've looked at some of these advanced features. You can do group video calling. You can create groups. So you can send a message to a group rather than an individual. You can call a, a group instead of just an individual. Why? I find that we've got this Hello Little World Skype this group that's amazing. People will just come up and say they want to Skype with you. They've got a question about technology, question about culture, etc. So if you go into Skype, I won't go through this now, but you'll see that you can actually add people and create a group, but make sure you name the group or it may disappear. So just to show you, this is Hello Little World Skype. It's an amazing group of educators across the world, Africa, Nepal, China, Indonesia, Asia, Europe, Americas, you name it, they've got it. So they all speak different languages and most have English as a common one, whether it be their first or second. And I think Steve asked me to mention Skype Translator. This is an amazing addition to, uh, to Skype. It means, um, oh, I hope someone will quickly Google it for me and drop the link in because I don't think I've got it at my fingertips. Yeah, you need Windows 8.1, you need to download the app to your computer. But it means that if you are connecting with a teacher or a class that speaks Spanish or Chinese, they can actually hear what you're asking them in their language. They can actually ask or tell you something in their language and Skype interprets it and videos it back to you with that bit of a delay while it's translating to you. So no, there are subtitles too. Yeah, great. So this is going to open up the classroom completely with people. Um, it's really accurate at the moment. It's quite accurate for Spanish. It's in beta format. So you have to ask or log yourself on. If you Google for Skype Translator, you can actually apply to be one of the first people. Yeah, accents will vary. Steve, I wish your um, microphone worked because I'd love you to do that. I've got it. Um, I was given it straight away and I'm going to test it with Mandarin Chinese because that's, <laughs> that's the language that um, we're learning at school. And I've also got a Spanish um, teacher who's going to try it with me, um, Sebastian Panicle. Uh, oh, I've forgotten what the, Eng the Indian language is, but 
that their languages on this Skype translator. So they've got a lot of languages. They're still testing it and trying to um, do it. Yeah, Hindi, that's right. Thanks, Carol. So we're going to try it and see how accurate it is and give feedback to Skype. If you're going to use Skype, um, I think, like I probably use it every week, several times a week in classes. Aussie <laughs> English don't know about our accent, that's to be tested. It means that we need to be transparent, we need to be out there, we need to be networked, we need to be actively finding people and letting them, like Mariko, find us. It can make your teaching messy because you may have something planned for your lesson and then all of a sudden when someone says, uh, can you link up with us? And all of a sudden learning takes another direction. My lessons can always wait. It means we can learn spontaneously. Kids are curious. It drives their curiosity and then drives their learning. They ask questions of those who are actually um, video conferencing with us. But you need to be networked. So I like Twitter. I love that Skype in education site, um, et cetera, et cetera. I've never had a bad moment with anyone that's connected with us in Skype. And the kids don't forget. Oh, sorry, I've repeated that. If you're on Twitter, here's, um, follow. Make sure you follow at Skype Classroom. They are there to share what's happening, um, the latest lessons that are being offered, sharing what other teachers are doing to give you ideas, etc. And the other hashtag to follow is Skype to learn. Because some of the most amazing teachers who are using Skype a sharing with that hashtag. And don't forget, you can find them on Facebook. Now, I don't know if there's any... Um, yeah, Kahoot. I've heard people actually use Kahoot. Well, Steve, are you from South... Are you living maths? Can you put in the chat? Steve is an amazing educator. Oh, so Steve is living maths. So you've got to look him up. Um, from South Africa, so it must be time for you to be asleep. Steve, do you want to quickly try your mic again? Because Steve's the expert. Try your microphone. We were getting a little warbly um, effect when you tried before. So let's go once more. In 30 seconds, Steve, tell us about yourself. Oh, the bandwidth is good because you're sounding like a really fired up chipmunk. So Steve is someone that you've got to follow on Twitter, so just look for Living Maths on Twitter. <laughs> you don't need a translator, and I'm sorry about that. So thank you for coming all the way from South Africa for us. I've learnt so much about Skype with Steve. So Steve will connect kindergarten classes in South Africa with teachers, and I've done a lot of stuff on the fly with you. Um, OK, Carol, that's probably me. That's me. So are there any last minute questions? If not, Carol, I'll hand it back to you. Wow, Anne, that was a whirlwind. And that's what it's like with you all the time. That's why I call you an extraordinary presenter. And your digital extraordinary skills with Skype shine shone through here today. And at times, uh, you were talking to the converted, of course, but I think this will make a really great session for people to watch later on. And it was nice to try to hear Steve all the way from South Africa, but so grateful that she joined us in text. Thank you also to Sarah and who else do we have? Danielle and Brian. I hope you enjoyed the session. If you've got a question and you want to put it into the text chat, that would be fine. We're going to finish up here in just a couple of minutes. We've got several things happening this morning, but it's been fantastic. Skype is something that I believe is still a little underused by some of our educators across the world. Perhaps it's still a secret. <laughs> All right, I'm seeing the lovely comments coming through, especially one from Steve who's saying that they're interviewing an astronaut on the 23rd of March. Wow, that will be cool. And Steve, you do Google Hangouts as well. That's another favourite of mine because it's really good for those interviews that can be viewed later on. And by the way, you were speaking chipmunk, but I was listening in Taiwanese. <laughs> All right, and your last comments. What would you recommend for teachers who want to become digitally extraordinary in their use of Skype, in particular for classroom. You've got 
one minute. Okay, I think first they need to be networked because you can't do anything that's extraordinary, especially with tools like Skype, unless you've got connections. So join Skype in education. Get on Twitter or just search for that hashtag I shared before. Meet people. Yeah, take the risk. Just grab every opportunity you can because you can always fit the curriculum with that and get your toes wet, as Steve said. Thank you. And thank you, Anne. That was wonderful. We really appreciate it. We're closing up here now, but if you want to join me for a Toastmaster chat in my room in five minutes' time, there's the link for you. I really appreciate an audience, but I often do talk to myself. So we'll see who turns up over there. We want to remind you that, uh, just come to this slide, that when you exit from the room that you'll get a little survey and we'd be happy for you to fill that in. <laughs> And I'm not sure how well that would work for you on your phone there, Brian, but uh, if you can't do it, that's okay. And if you haven't yet joined our community at aussielive.com, we'd really love you to do that. It goes on all year, but we only have our Aussie Live 2015, 16 conferences once every year, so usually around about this time. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you again real soon. I'll now close the recording.